the European Union will soon elect a new parliament, overshadowed by concerns about growing right-wing populism and fears that Russia is infiltrating the very heart of European democracy. They finance uh, fascist right-wing parties who want to destroy the European Union. The political elements around Mr. Putin have a major interest in destabilizing Europe, and I fear that they will succeed. Putin supports patriots with views close to his own. He's defending his country. We set out on a tour of several European cities. Together, Deutsche Welle and its French partner station, France 24, investigated Russian influence on Europe's far right. The Russian embassy in Berlin, which dominated the then socialist East Germany more than 30 years ago. And how much influence does the Kremlin try to wield behind the scenes today? Germany's Bundestag regards the right-wing populist party alternative for Germany, the AFD, as especially open to Russia. Its lead candidate for the upcoming European elections is Jörg Meuthen. We see good neighborly relations with Russia and with the United States. We want a thoroughly pragmatic approach. I don't represent Russian interests or American interests. I'm a German politician representing German interests, and it's in our German and European interests to maintain good and open relations with Russia and with other nations. And yet one particular AFD representative has been cultivating more than good relations with Russia, Markus von Meyer. And he's been reaping scorn from other parliamentarians. <laughs> Markus von Meyer has long presented himself as a friend of Moscow whenever possible with his close confidant, Manuel Ochsenreiter. Many photos of the two friends can be found on the internet. Ochsenreiter is known as a right-wing populist who aggressively seeks closer relations with Moscow, even more so now since the Ukraine conflict. He often gives interviews to Russian nationalist media. We need to plan for the future, and I hope that we start now with planning that we can leave NATO in five to ten years. When hostilities commenced in eastern Ukraine, Ochsenreiter was seen in the company of the separatists leaning toward Russian President Putin. He styled himself an election observer, posing for photos with other foreigners, such as a group of French fighters. The conflict in Ukraine caused a rift between Moscow and the European Union. It began with Russia's annexation of Crimea in March 2014 and deepened when Moscow was found to be arming the separatists in eastern Ukraine. This proved to be a geopolitical turning point. The developments in 2014, especially in Ukraine, they mobilized or they made relations between the European far right and Moscow more active. After the start of the Russian-Ukrainian war, Russia was sanctioned. And as a response to those sanctions, Russia would try to interfere in the elections. Even at that time, Putin was establishing contact with the head of Italy's far-right Lega Nord party, Matteo Salvini, now in a high position in the Italian government. Five years later, with the European election approaching, Salvini is promoting closer cooperation between the right-wing populist parties, including Germany's AFD. If we join Salvini, Strache, Le Pen and others in one big group, we'll have the political clout that a lone warrior doesn't have to form policy. The AFD decided to take a pro-Russian stance. Falling in line with all other European right-wing populists, they rejected Western sanctions against Russia over its interference in the conflict in eastern Ukraine. And after five years of building alliances with Europe's right-wing extremists, Moscow scored a victory. Among the key operators were various shadowy figures, such as Manuel Ochsenreiter. In November 2014, he was photographed in eastern Ukraine together with a Frenchman. 
Victor Lenta, an ex-French soldier posing with sympathizers from France. They all share right-wing views and hatred for liberal democratic values. Far-right organizations and parties are uh, some of the few uh, political forces in Europe that are still uh, ready to cooperate with the Kremlin. The Kremlin needs uh, allies in the West. In 2018, France's Yellow Vests movement took their protests to the streets. In the spring, the former soldier and mercenary in eastern Ukraine, Viktor Lenta, turned up again. He was a member of a self-appointed security team. We're the marshals the prefecture asked for when it required that every demonstration must have an internal security service. And you're also a yellow vest? Yes, of course. What's your goal this time? Is it going well? Listen, as I said, we're here because the prefecture called for a security service, one that prevents any and all violence internally. We want to show the French people, the prime minister and the government, that the violence doesn't come from us but usually from a provocation by the police. French right-wing extremist Victor Lenta transitioned from the war in eastern Ukraine to the streets of Paris. But in both cases, as a hatchet man for Putin's interests. Publicly, the Russian president cultivates his relations with the heads of Europe's far-right groups, like Marine Le Pen of the National Rally. I know that you represent quite a fast-growing element of European political forces. It's a very profitable contact. Le Pen's party has taken out a total of 11 million euros in loans from banks close to the Kremlin, as funding for recent presidential election campaigns. And she maintains very high-level contacts with Moscow, such as Thierry Mariani, ex-French Secretary of State for Transport. He has switched to the national rally and supports Russia's annexation of Crimea. I've been there more than 10 times. Nobody can seriously doubt that the people there would rather live under Russian control. Now, he's running for the EU parliament and takes a clear stance on Russia. Continuing the policy of sanctions punishes Europe and our own farmers as much as Russia. That's suicide. Observers say Russia seeks to expand its influence in Europe by supporting right-wing populist leaders as well as their extremist voter base. The idea is to fan the flames constantly with gasoline and to set people who are already stirred up against each other. It's pyromaniac propaganda, a propaganda aimed at fracturing our societies. In France, the Yellow Vest's protests gave the populists room to maneuver. Almost every weekend, people take to the streets of France to demonstrate. A court proceeding in this southern Polish city has thrown unexpected light on Russia's supposed methods of peddling its influence to Europe's right-wing base. The defendant is Michal P., a right-wing radical on trial for terrorism since early 2019. He's accused of having organized an arson attack in neighboring Ukraine. Specifically, in Uzhurod, western Ukraine home of many Ukrainian citizens from the Hungarian ethnic minority. On the night of February 4th, 2018, a surveillance camera recorded two men trying to throw Molotov cocktails at a building used by a Hungarian association. They caused only minor damage. The defense attorney explains his client's motives. A controlled operation was planned to inflame ethnic tensions in the western Ukrainian province of Zarkapachia. It was calculated to trigger hostility between the Hungarian minority on one side and the ethnic Ukrainians in the other part of the region.
It coincides with Moscow's long-cherished hope that Ukraine might be further destabilized by an ethnic conflict in its western tip on the border with Hungary. Right at the start, the trial in Krakow took an interesting turn. Michal P. implicated a German as having incited him to perpetrate the attack. He has views in common with Manuel. They've taken part in conferences together. It was Manuel Ochsenreiter, the right-wing journalist who had been supporting the separatists in eastern Ukraine. Another right-wing extremist has been called as a witness in Krakow, Bartosz Bekir. He refused to give our camera team an interview. Bekir might have some vital information. He knows both the defendant and Manuel Ochsenreiter. He's known them from the start of hostilities in Ukraine, when they spoke out at a conference in support of Putin-leaning separatists. Four weeks after the first attempted attack in Uzhorod, another took place at the Hungarian Cultural Center, and it was successful. Several Ukrainians are accused of carrying it out, but it's unclear who instigated it. Apparently, it wasn't the same people who organized the first attempt. There is no one center in Russia where a decision about interference would, would take place. There are people around the Kremlin, experts, think tanks, institutions, um, some interest groups that want some reward from the Kremlin. In Berlin, within view of the Brandenburg Gate, the Soviet War Memorial commemorates the Red Army troops who fell in the battles against Nazi Germany. In the aftermath of that war, Germany and Europe were divided until the Berlin Wall came down. But the hopes for peaceful coexistence in a united Europe have yet to be realized. Nearly 30 years later, Russia seems bent on dividing Europe again but this time with the help of right-wing extremists.